Hey, so diving on into our next deck here. This is our first time playing Riven, the new champion out of our latest set release. So Riven says, whenever you gain the attack token Reforge, Reforge generates you one of the three blade fragments you need to create the blade to exile. These fragments either give two attack, give overwhelm, or give quick attack. And then the blade to exile is a slow spell that does, does all of the above. Riven notably says, whenever you gain the attack token, you get to reforge. So, this has synergy with the scout mechanic in Runeterra, which says the first time you attack with only scouts in a round, you gain an attack token. So, scouts let you trigger Riven extra in turns to reforge extra times. Riven also plays well with rally effects like Relentless Pursuit here, so... We've got kind of the Demacia Agro core, similar to how we, um, the Misfortune Scouts deck, only we're playing Riven instead of Misfortune as our payoff here. And this does give us access to some sweet top end like Captain Farron to close the game out in, in the late game. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games here with this and, uh, and see how it goes. Yeah, Ribbon. Ribbon just got a pretty good stat line for three, all things considered. Fleet Feather into some barriers sounds good. I'm gonna mulligan the Quinn. It's a little bit slow in the aggro matchup. Looks like discard aggro. What's going on, Bulletproof Pope? Yeah. Yeah, Riot, Riot has a bunch of transition and graphic stuff like that on their, on their site for creators, which is great. Hey, thanks for the tip, Lacarp. Donating for my very bad deck submission. I mean, all good decks start as bad decks somewhere. So this probably means they just don't attack with non-elusives this turn, which is fine for us. That is a you problem, Stuggle Bear. Sometimes, sometimes you need to refresh. Um, if you have an ad blocker on, uh, ad blockers sometimes screw with um, the deck list overlays and Twitch extensions in general, because the way Twitch extensions overlay on a video is very similar to an overlay ad. I'm gonna eat their elusive because we can't block it. I'm pretty happy to exchange this here or here, so these attacks seem reasonable. Addis, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Uh, does he do this? So we'll get to play Riven out next turn. She's got a great stat line. You could probably argue she makes the rockin' world go round. Yeah, yeah, taking trades against the crowd favorite deck proactively tends to be a very good thing to do. It's a very, very good turn. <sighs> I'm supposed to go to six here. <laughs> sure. Yeah, vision. Vision's a pretty big feel bad card. I don't, I don't have anything. I can only kill two of the three elusives, so we're dead. And that's, and that's assuming they don't draw. They don't draw anything meaningful. They don't draw any burn spells. Montana, welcome to the channel. Thanks for the follow.
It's funny how the things that are always most obnoxious are the things that are most difficult to interact with. Things like things like vision, things like Lee Sin. Those those types of effects are the ones that always always feel the worst. Well, to be fair, to be fair to Soraka, Soraka tends to feel bad to play against because they interact with you. So the, the Soraka deck tends to be very interactive. Relax. Welcome to the channel. Might just be rallying this turn. I don't really have anything else to do with my mana, huh? I can't save her, right? And we again just like just have too many combat tricks and nothing to do with them here. Perfect. Gave me, gave me something to do with my mana. Soldier to me. Do you have a Sajani? A Sajani? A Sajani? I am scared of Sajani. Do 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 do. Probably gonna give this Darko a quick attack. Hook one of these. Pain is nothing. The power of the written world. So I get I guess I technically I technically could have gone plus two, plus four, and hooked this into here. I don't know. I'll have the chance to do that next turn. Okay, just do this for now. Think I want to run this into here? Oh, an yeah, and their deck, their deck plays a ton of combat tricks to keep Teemo alive, so... So I think we just want to rally here and then have a decent open attacks next turn, right?
They give this overwhelm so they can't just jump it meaningfully. And then I can sharp sight this so it trades here. I guess this puts my board pretty small here. Could resolve have been good here. Yeah, maybe that's better than overwhelm. Yeah, yeah, I think you're I think you're right. Instead of giving this overwhelm, I should have uh, I should have played Rangers Resolve. I would have saved this and this. This still would have died, but my board would be much wider, which would be better for my open attacks next turn. I mean, we could, we could just have lethal with this, right? This is 8 overwhelm, 11, 13. So, they're dead. Alright. You know, we pulled the sneaky on him. That'll, that'll do pig. That'll do. Reforging the blade seems pretty okay, champ. Polish, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Valor plus Blade of Exile equal Caw Blade. Asking the real questions. Kaka, kaka. Orthogani, good morning to you. Almost, almost afternoon here in Cornlandia. All right, rematch against discard aggro. See if we can, see if we can not, can not get blown out this time. Uh, that seems great, actually. I don't know if it's you drop on two, but like banking mana for sharp sight can let us win a combat, which sounds great. That is not what we're looking for in the aggro matchup. Don't don't cry. Play with the snowball. <laughs> by the by the way, I saw on Twitter that did parts of New York get like three feet of snow? I saw a tweet that referenced 41 inches of snow. Was that real? Anybody live out on the on the right coast? That's real? Good lord. That's crazy. Stay safe out there, folks. I think of Captain Akira as a card. That's the... That's the one that um, captures something, right? With Spell Shield? Yeah, yeah, feel free if you've got some good photos. Anybody that lives out there, feel free to link them. On second thought, inviting chat to link pictures probably isn't a safe thing to do. Anybody with a anybody with a mod icon, feel anybody with a mod or a sub icon, feel free to link a picture. <laughs> I'm I'm also not one of those idiots that uh, that shares my whole desktop though when I stream. So whenever whenever I see a streamer like capturing their entire desktop as as part of their stream instead of capturing just the game they're playing, 
It's always like, mm, you're asking for trouble. You you deserve you deserve whatever happens to you. Is there a way to just look at the new cards? Uh, RuneTerraCCG.com has, uh, has a way to look at just new cards on it. Yeah, yeah, but... The party has a Here we go. Only companies are capable of doing that. Yep. It's very possible. No, it's not even very possible. I messed up there. I should have taken the pass. When I when I attacked and let them deploy Jinx to the board there, it was a mistake. I should have I should have taken the pass and missed my three points of damage. I I messed that up. Yeah, we have to have to block like this, right? Very, very likely dead to missiles here. Time for the money makers. And again, like this this type of sequencing here, there's a chance we died to rockets anyways this game, but I'd have another blocker on board right now if I would have taken the pass earlier. Which is uh, which is a big deal. Go down, will you? Now it's a party. Now it's a party. I assume they're going to make a rocket in response here. So, discard, discard aggro seems like a bad matchup, which kind of makes sense. Our deck has, our, our curve is much clunkier than theirs. We have a bunch of combat tricks that aren't particularly stellar because they're not interacting with our board. They're looking to go wide around it. We don't, we don't have ways to really take Jinx off the table super efficiently. Like, we have Challenger units, but they're kind of slow. Trundle, Trindamir, eh? Yeah, yeah, our deck is, our deck is bigger than traditional scouts. We don't have one drops. Yeah, I think, I think even traditional scouts probably has a bad matchup there. I'm going to keep these so they generate value. I'm going to mulligan looking for some other cheap cards. Ribbon, Ribbon's a great, great card to play on curve here. Alright, notable that our opponent is playing the Iona Splash here. Which is probably better for us, right? I don't have to play around Ruination. <laughs> for people that heard us talking about talking about the snow, this is someone's picture from upstate New York. That's uh, that's quite the quite the sight. There's a table under there somewhere. It looks like there's a deck railing, I assume, back there too. Stay stay safe out there, folks. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to worry about atrocity while racing. Well, they're not a Targon deck, right? They're Iona. I 
I wonder, I wonder if snow like that will cause COVID cases to go down in those areas because people have to like forcibly stay home. They're down to five. Is there some kind of combo kill in their deck that I'm not I'm not thinking of? Crutchzilla, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Blue Man. The fact that she's good on both evens and odds is nice. They could they could Mina us here. I feel like they've got to be super dead without Mina, right? Nothing gets between me and my mark. Hot damn, it's the boss. Hot damn, it's the boss. Right. Well, they have feel the rush mana. Here we go. Yeah, they could. They could have second trundle here. Do I try and kill trundle? I'm gonna try and kill trundle. To play around, to play around Ice Quake here. All right, Valor, suit up. Steel Tempest, yep. Wake me, Daddy. Are we supposed to commit more to the board here before attacking? I feel like I am. Okay, I think I want to drag Trundle out of the way so Quinn can maybe live through combat. This could be wrong. We could get ice quick. I mean, tough doesn't really protect most of my board from ice quake is the issue. Yeah, I'm not. Someone asked about Riven Yasuo. Why? Why would you play Riven with Yasuo? There's like no synergy there, right? Is there? Is there something I'm missing? It's a lore pairing. I'm going to save this Valor here. It is, it is still stunned, unfortunately. So I think... I, I think we just kill the ice pillars so they can't dictate combat. Hey, Alan, thank you for the raid. I hope you had a great stream. I saw you 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 are you're a machine, man. 
Go get, go get some sleep. <laughs> Welcome to folks coming over from Alan's channel. If you're new to Hoaglandia, I stream full time here. I do rude terror stuff five to five to seven days a week. Plus five. So opponent is notably not playing Shadow Isle, so I think we just take this hit because like atrocity is not something I have to care about. Yep, that just happened. I was I was expecting Mina. I was not expecting Singular Will. Mina Mina was on my radar. Is his a is a legal card? I think we're I think we're dead. I don't think we can kill them on this attack, and then we're dead. We're dead to this next turn. Yeah, we could just we could just go for broke and then Riven and Blade her and try and kill them that way. That's probably that's probably the play, huh? Like they have six cards in hand, so like we have Hearthstone lethal, but there's a good chance they interact with us. Hey, thanks for the follows, folks. Magana, Strawberry King, and Ilu. Trundle, Trundle closes games out very, very quickly. So, so far, this deck, so far, Riven has been impressive and the Blade's been impressive, but this deck has felt bad to me for a lot of the same reasons the other Demacia aggro decks often feel bad. I wasn't a big fan of the, the Misfortune Scouts deck when it was popular. Being, being this kind of clunkier, bigger aggro deck doesn't feel stellar. Fiora, Fiora Shen. It's just probably good here for keeping our things alive against Fiora. A little on the expensive side, though. Yeah, I also... I I know this deck has a very good win rate, and obviously it's very popular, but I'm not a fan of how this deck tends to play out on average. It feels it feels like a very high rolly deck. It's 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 wins swing hard and its losses swing hard. I prefer prefer decks that feel more consistent than that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The wrong wrong half problem where you like have too many threats and not enough combat tricks or too many combat tricks and not enough threats is how how these decks always play out for me. I feel about just dropping Grizzle Ranger here. I think I want to save this for reactively. I could I could play this and like try and repost and get in here. Yeah, I mean the the Misfortune Scouts deck was like night and day different when it had Misfortune versus when it didn't. For for sure. Okay, so with that play, I think we're just attacking this in here so they don't have free eats for Fiora next turn. So, this is this is why I think it's good to articulate things. If you replace Brutal Hunter with the new Demacia Landmark, would that help the early game a bit more? How does playing a 3-mana card that doesn't impact the board on its own help my early game? And actually, that card actually does the exact opposite of that, right? Like, that Demacia Landmark is a card that helps you generate value and extra board presence and control the board as the game goes along. The fate of mortals and spirits falls to me. Who does not know the name, 
think we do this and then try and repost to kill this Shen and then just get very sad when they have a trick of their own. Morning, Capperly. I like this well. Balance favors Yeah, none of our none of our plays seem good here. Do I just take the pass and burn their mana here? I think I, I think I just deny them the opportunity to develop here. It's a good draw. Well, the, the problem is we're... If I attack them again there, they just get to deploy this, and then they deploy something else this turn, and then I'm really screwed. Nothing gets between me and my mark. Hot damn is the boss. You best start running. I find them unworthy. Well, I mean, if they have a if they have a barrier as their card in hand, or you just get get completely fucked, because I don't have they, their thing wouldn't take damage, and then we couldn't we couldn't finish it with the challenger unit. Yeah, we're just we're just dead to their combo finish now. play another game or two with this, but this deck feels bad for a lot of the same reasons Misfortune Scouts always felt bad to me. Just a lot of kind of mediocre cards trying to lean on synergies, and we don't we don't have Misfortune to steal games here. I guess the Reforge the Blade stole us a game in a way that was a little bit different than, than Misfortune, but... The only the only Demacia aggressive decks I've ever really been a fan of are like the the Lucian Lucian based more more combo centric aggro decks. Yeah, Lucian Lucian Kalista is great. We've played that on stream before, and the the new Plaza card sounds really good in there. I think that, think that deck was reasonable before it got Plaza, and with Plaza, it seems nuts. Yeah, yeah, the Lucian, Lucian Shadow Isle decks. Zoe, Zoe is great. Mono, Teemo, Noxious, BNC. This is a burn deck. This is, this is a deck that existed, like, six months ago when I first started playing. And we've actually seen this deck a few times on the ladder recently, and it makes me wonder, um... I bet we had people that were like took breaks from Rune Terra come back with this set and like this was the deck that they had played they had played previously. Yeah, it's just just a burn deck.
Thinking about Riven as an individual card, she's very reasonable. The blade, the blade of exile, is a really powerful finishing tool. Let's make it deep. No real reason to attack here, right? Because they have these free blockers. I guess I can take this trade. I mean, you're you're correct in your assessment that that is that is what this deck is doing. I don't think Riven is bad. This deck this deck can be mediocre without Riven being mediocre. But pretty pretty good curve here. Now we get to drop this this turn and then Quinn next turn and have some scout attacks to reforge a couple of times. I really hope Riven Lee is bad. I would really, I would really prefer if Lee Sin did, wasn't a competitive, a competitive super, super common thing again. Lee Sin, Lee Sin, Lee Sin still feels like shit to play against. I know, I know they made him worse making him five mana, but it's still very non-interactive. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm worried about, Precipic. We played against it earlier. Really, really think Runeterra is a worse game when things like the Lee Sin combo are competitive. Leeson. The Leeson combo deck, like, basically circumvents all of the really good things about Runeterra's combat system. In a way that doesn't feel great, in my opinion. We're gonna give Riven quick attack here, so she doesn't take damage inside of combat, and then swing. Yeah, we're definitely in an okay spot this game. Our opponent is notably not really playing very large things to the board, so our, our thick units are just outclassing them. You feel the same way about Ezreal being playable again? God, what an incredibly stupid thing to say. The idea that Ezreal is comparable to Lee Sin is laughable, especially, especially in a post, in a post Sharp Sight world. Especially in a world where they made his burst damage get shrunk down to nothing. Lee Sin is not remotely as non-interactable as Lee Sin is, and in fact, TCG players doing things, saying things like that, minimizes the impact of cards that are offensive. Ezreal, Ezreal is not a one-turn kill card anymore. You can, you can dislike Ezreal, that's fine, but to say Ezreal is as non-interactive and a one-turn kill card like Lee Sin frequently is, is just objectively wrong and it's nonsense. Take your, take your feelings out of the equation and look objectively at how the cards work and the play patterns that they generate. And again, it's not, it's, I'm not saying you can't dislike Ezreal, because that's subjective. I'm saying, objectively speaking, Lee Sin combo is difficult to interact with in this game, and it removes elements of combat that are interesting and good for the game. Those are, those are different things. Turf and Abaddon, thanks for the follows. Welcome to the channel. What are my thoughts on Noxious Freljord Scargrounds? Haven't really played with or against it, so don't really have an opinion on it. That is not the next deck. The next deck we are going to be playing is a PNZ Freljord Scargrounds deck. As always, if you're wondering what decks are coming up, you can check the deck queue on my website. Once I stamp papers, now faces. Once I stamp papers, now faces. 
I think I'm attacking with my two twos just to like clear space on my bench here. Where easy used to be, he used to be two damage per spell. Auto killing you with karma was about where Lee Sin is now. That's that's not true either. I agree. I agree. The feel bads were were similar at the end of the game, but requiring two champions to be in play, neither of which could protect themselves, um, is still different than like what Lee Sin was. Did I miss lethal? I probably missed lethal. I'm talking to chat. It's fine. We're at fourteen. It's gonna be okay. Uh, I could not overwhelm. You can't play these inside a combat. I could have. I could have pumped my non-blocked unit. If you hush Lee Sin after Dragon's Kick, it does still resolve. Yeah, it'll have less damage and it won't have overwhelm anymore. There are there are some very narrow answers to Lee Sin. So Freljord with Frostbites and Silence effects are two narrow answers to it. Vengeance. Vengeance isn't a very good answer to Lee Sin because Lee Sin decks tend to play Bastion and Deny. Yeah, the best the best answer to Lee Sin is just like I've said, it's like a Magic the Gathering deck. The best answer to that deck is just killing them faster. The, the correct and that's and that's different than most of the designs in Rune Terra because Rune Terra tends to be a very interactive game on average with the decks that are good, and the the Lee Sin deck encourages you to not be interactive and just be just race them. Oh, it's Mulligan. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. I, I will say we were talking about Ezreal as a comparison to Leeson. I love where Ezreal has ended up as a card. I think I think this final draft of Ezreal that we landed on is really fantastic. It went from this like big combo flourish finish that was difficult to enable to this just like super reasonable mid-range card that's good in a lot of spots. Yeah, I, I like I like where they ended. It took them a couple of iterations, but they ended in a good spot. Victor, thanks for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Diana Nocturne, eh? Mulligan, the rest of these looking for curve filler here. It might be right to keep two Riven just because she's got a good stat line against what likely has an aggressively slanted deck. Keep the second Riven and see how this goes. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! I made a terrible mistake, chat. Yeah, I agree. One of one of my old magic buddies messaged me on Facebook the other day, and he was like, "Alright, Jeff, I need a I need a Jun deck. I'm gonna learn Rune Terra finally." And I was like, "Avid Draven Ezreal, perfect Jun deck." I think mean, I think mean, Draven Ezreal is like exactly the kind of deck. <laughs> Yikes! Yikes! Who does not know the name we are we are in danger. What exactly is a Jun deck light? A Jun deck is basically the quintessential mid-range deck. It's a deck that plays a lot of quality interaction while also playing decent threats so it can end the game. No, it's not not I don't think I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't describe grinding as a key factor in what a Jun deck does. 
I think it's highlighted by efficient interaction that also allows you to race well. Would be would be the defining feature of a Jun deck in my opinion. Cards cards like Mystic Shot and um cards like Mystic Shot and like Get Excited are like quintessential like Jun style cards coming from Magic because they are um cards that are interaction that also double as reach. Yeah, yeah, I would I would define the Ash Noxus deck as being a pretty good example of like a good quality mid-range deck too. Yeah, Jun Jund is a magic turn. For people that are new to the channel, uh, before I started doing Rune Terra content as my primary content type, I did Magic the Gathering content full-time for two years. I spent a few years playing that game professionally. We've done we've done a lot of played a lot of stuff. I think we're playing Riven here. It might be right to just play the Protege to, like, kill their blocker, though, too. I'm gonna kill their blocker. Blau Flame, thanks for the follow. Ash World, thanks for coming back. I appreciate the 18 months. Do I still play Magic from time to time? No, I haven't touched Magic in like two and a half months now. I will probably dip back into some Magic when their new set releases at the end of January, but not planning to before then. <sighs> I think I'm supposed to Riven and Chump Block and then play second Riven. Freely, they're just taking the pass. Deal. Are there some S-tier decks that already take the place of old ones? I'm going to give you the best piece of advice you're ever going to hear about card games and set releases. It doesn't just apply to Rune Terra. This applies to all card games. Anybody who tells you they know what the S-tier or best decks are less than 24 hours after the set releases is either an idiot or a liar. And in either case, you should probably be cautious and not listen to them. There's, there's no substitute for getting in repetition and playing actual games. They could be, they could be both. Yeah, there, there is a, definitely a chance that they are both. Alright, so we have a quick attack blade here. I think, I think I'm going to weapon hilt this... Quick attack it, kill the Traveler here. Yeah, you could definitely stretch it to more than 24 hours. A week, a week or two is honestly realistic. play Scythria here first, because if they choose to attack, I want to throw Scythria under this dragon bus. Man, that, that's so super unfortunate. They like, they high rolled trap. Wait, were they, were they actually playing Traveler in their deck? Where did they, where did they get this from? Oh, they hit, they hit the right, they hit Eclipse Dragon off of the Nightfall card, and then Eclipse Dragon generated Traveler, and then Traveler invoked Golden Sister. Yo, dog.
It was definitely, definitely a series, a series of unfortunate events. The last steel one. Saichi, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Alright, we didn't play this one for very long, but I'm going to go ahead and be done with this one. Um, key, key takeaways. Ribbon, and especially the Blade of Exile, feels like a very... Reforge feels like a very reasonable, powerful finishing mechanic that I am interested in exploring in other shells. That... That being said, the core of what this deck was doing here felt bad for a lot of the same reasons that the other Demacia decks in this format have always felt bad to me. I know I know they've been competitive over time, but they just don't feel consistent to me. Um, the having to play, if we look at our deck, you know, all of these Rangers Resolves and Sharp Sights and Relentless Pursuits and Repasts, like, too often our hand just gets gummed up with too much stuff and not enough not enough things to put those things on and just our our average card quality feels feels kind of low over overall this felt like the bilgewater scout deck but without the misfortunes to have those misfortune nut draws our our curve yeah just didn't didn't, didn't feel like the raw power level of what we were doing was was very was very good Right, what are we doing next? Oh, we're gonna play some. We're gonna play some Scar Grounds. Let's let's play some Scar Grounds. That sounds sweeter. Let me make sure this one is on my Mobilitics page, and we'll dive in. 